it's Ro and it is my birthday, I think. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my birthday video, otherwise I'm gonna have to film another intro and I don't wanna do that. So I'm here with my assumptions video for you. We are also going to do my makeup so you guys can have a tutorial on how I did this look, nice and glittery because birthday. And you loved this look in another video that I did, another few videos that I did, you guys just over and over and over were saying, I love your makeup, I love your makeup, I love your makeup. So what does a big sister best friend do? She shows you how to recreate that makeup so you can have it on yourself. This is a long one. I'm just gonna warn you, it's a long one, or at least as I'm ending this, it's a long one because it took me three separate videos. Adam called in the middle of it. I made him talk. You guys are freaking awesome. I loved making this video. I loved all of your assumptions. Some of you guys kind of felt bad about posting your assumptions. You thought that they were too personal or juicy, but I loved every single one of them. Every single one of them. The juicier, the better. That's what this is all about. So without wasting any more time, here are all your assumptions and this makeup look. Mwah. Hello, my loves. Oh, that is so up close and personal, but we're doing a makeup video today, so you need to see my eyelids. You guys loved this look. I should probably put it on the screen. I'll put a picture of it on the screen, but this eyeshadow look. So I figured it would be really, really cool for me to recreate the eyeshadow look while I answer your assumptions about me. And before we get started, check this out. Are you obsessed with me? Look at my shirt. Ah! I'm wearing my face on my shirt. Problem with it. Oh well. Before we get started, I wanna let you know I did my foundation, I did my concealer, my bronzer, and my blush already because it's gonna be a long look. I wanna, I hope, I hope I can recreate this. It's gonna be basically the exact same thing that I did. It might not be the exact same colors, but you can recreate this look with any colors. Another thing before we get started, my air conditioning is broken. They're coming tomorrow to fix it, and I had to shut the fan off because you won't hear me. It would totally drown me out. So you could see already beads of sweat forming. I apologize, it's just how it's gonna be today. That's what friends who aren't gonna judge you and beauty blenders are for. Now, really quick, number three or four or 27, I don't know, before we get started. For some reason, YouTube has been deleting your comments off of things. So for example, Caitlin left a whole bunch of assumptions and then her comment disappeared, but thank God, I was able to go into the back end of YouTube and screenshot it. So I screenshotted as many comments were there. But if for some reason I don't answer your assumption, it's either because it was worded differently but very similar to one that already was there, or more than likely, I didn't see it. So I apologize if there's something pressing, we could always do a part two. You guys left me so, so, so many that there might be a part two to this anyway. I'm gonna start with my eyebrows. I'm using the soap method recently. I love it. I just have this little bar of soap that I, whoops, that I wet with setting spray, use a spoolie, and this is how we do our brows. So let's get started with Caitlin's comment. That's what made me think about this. She's so cute. I assumed that you had been married before you got back in touch with Adam. Nope. I've never been married before. I assumed that you were a mom, which she now knows is not the case. This is really funny, because am I gonna do any makeup while doing this? I assumed that you had done time yourself because of Jessica, you know, birds of a feather. So she probably found me from my collab with Jessica Kent, who is a prison YouTuber who talks a lot about recovery in prison. So she's saying she figured that I had done time since Jess had done time and we're friends. No, but Jess is so amazing and vocally supportive of Adam and I just love her to pieces. She assumed that I was taller, most people do. I put in the comments before you get my answer, how tall you think that I am. I will wait. I'm 5'3". Most people think I'm about 5'8". That's because you only see me from waist up and I'm very long-waisted and my legs are really short, so my top half does look like I'm 5'8". <laughs> I assumed that you had a pet and that you were a cat person because you lived all by yourself, which is also an assumption because I don't live by myself, but I don't really care for cats. I'm scared of cats. I think they are sneaky and they're gonna hurt me all the time. If I had to choose, I am a dog person, but after my dog died, Adam and I decided no more pets until he comes home. It's just not fair to the animals because of the amount of time I was traveling to visit. I'm not here. I'm always distracted. I can't give them enough attention and that's not fair to them. I assume that you worked out and I was totally right about that. And I can tell FYI, you're adorable. Yeah, I work out a ton as you already know. The real Simone on Instagram said, well, this isn't an assumption, but I guess it's, I assume your page is lit low key, LOL. Oh, that's sweet. And Abigail on Instagram said, I assume that you're very strong. Thank you. I 
I like to believe that I am. This was probably one of my favorites. I assume that you're very prim and proper, but in the bedroom, you're a freak. Love ya. Ah. One of my favorite lines of a song ever is, lady in the street, but freak in the bed. Similar, somebody said that, I don't even have it in front of me, but since it's similar, she said, I assume that you have a ton of sex toys, which made me laugh hysterically. I don't actually, in fact, I only have one because it was a gift because when I told one of my girlfriends that I had none, she was like, are you kidding me? And for my birthday that year, she bought me a Hitachi. Here is one of my favorite stories to tell. When my mother was going through radiation, she developed a really, really bad stomach infection where I think it was actually a stomach fungus. I'm not sure, but it gave her these incredibly painful cramps in her stomach that were almost like contractions. She said it kind of reminded her of that which is terrible, poor thing. So on Christmas day one year, she was in so much pain, just literally sitting in a chair moaning. And since it was muscular and they would like contract and it would be like, you know, like a contraction. And then it would, after maybe 15 or 20 minutes resolve. So I'm like, well, you need a massage. In my head, ding, 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 light bulb. I have a Hitachi, it's called a personal massager. Obviously my mother did not know what this thing was. It just says personal massager on the box. So I have a picture of my mother. God rest her soul, lightning is gonna strike me right now. I'm gonna put it up here. Holding a Hitachi vibrator against her stomach. What makes this picture the epitome of the funniest thing that you have ever seen in your whole entire life. Literally my friend Joe. all I have to say is remember the Hitachi and she will, fall over laughing for a good 20 minutes before she can catch her breath every time, is that my mother is was so old school, off the boat, Roman Catholic Italian. She used to tell us all the time, us being my brother and my sisters, that she wanted to become a nun, but instead she wound up getting married and having kids and she regretted it and wished that she had become a nun. That's how Catholic my mom was. Sorry, mom, I know you're laughing now. Done with the brows. So I worked a lot with the Delancey palette that day. This one, somebody sent me on YouTube. Somebody sent me on YouTube. This one, one of you guys sent me as a gift to my PO box because you guys know I love makeup and eyeshadows and I found it on Amazon for you guys. I think it's only like $11, $9, something like that. It's really good colors. So I believe I started with this one and this one as my transition colors and then I worked that one in there as well. But let's start with this one. This one right here. <laughs> I'm such a makeup girl, right? I'm like, let's start with this one. You can't even see the palette. This is a really on the money one. She says, you seem like a confident and strong woman, but I assume that you have a hard time sharing your vulnerable and weaker side. 100%, you're absolutely right. Here's the thing. I am a confident and strong woman and I don't know if it was where I was raised in the Northeast. I find a lot of people to be like this. I don't know if it's because I'm Italian and I find a lot of Italian people to be like this or if it was just a genetic, like not genetic, but if it was my family because my mother was very like this. We don't open up easily. We don't share our vulnerabilities. We're like, we got it all together, I'm fine. But your life could be falling apart. And that's just how I was raised. Because I never, ever, ever, ever want anybody's pity. That is the worst thing you could do is pity me. You can feel empathetic for me, sympathetic for me, but I don't want you to pity me. Because to me, that is like the lowest emotion you can have for somebody is to pity them. Now we're going to dip into this one right here. We're just gonna go like a little bit lower on that crease. This next one says, I assume that sometimes you feel like you're a single girl, you don't even know. Yes, 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 and more yes. I assume you're confident and outgoing, but also have a reserved side. I also assume you have a hard time letting others down because you have such a big heart. Okay, so you assume the wrong and right in that one. I'm confident and outgoing. Actually, I'm not. I am so shy. I'm extremely insecure in a lot of ways. I hide it very well because at the same time, as much as I'm introverted and very, what's the opposite of outgoing? Introverted, I guess, and shy. I also push myself out of my comfort zone because I like to conquer my fears and I like to experience things in life. So I push myself. It's not easy for me. I'm not outgoing whatsoever. I'm not the most confident whatsoever. I basically act as if, which is another way of saying fake it till you make it because it's kind of like a negative way to say act as if you're already there. Everyone was trying to be so sweet and complimentary of me, which is great, but I was like, I want juice. This is for a video. I'm not gonna get offended. So she said, and I'm glad she said it. I assume that you have a lot of sex toys. It's already answered. 
and that your family is not happy about you dating Adam, but Adam's family loves you. I assume that you're okay with the possibility of not, I assume she's saying having children, but I had to screenshot it and it says read more and I forgot to read more part. Adam's family loves me. I like to believe that they do. I think they do. I love them. I'm gonna go in with these two now because I did a lot of pink in that one. Oh, here it is. Are you okay with the possibility of not having kids? I knew it. And Adam never getting out. I hate to even type that. I am okay with the possibility of not having kids. I've kind of pretty much resigned myself to the fact that it's not gonna happen for us and that's okay. I had to have a really serious soul searching moment. I think this happened like around 38, between 38 and 40. Do I wanna do this with Adam anymore? Do I feel like I can continue this because I should not have done my face makeup first because I'm making a mess. But because if that's something that I feel like I am not complete as a woman, if I don't do, then I need to let Adam know this and I need to peace out. And the answer that I came up with after a while of soul searching was I'm okay with it. I'm okay with never having kids. I don't think it's gonna be in the cards for us. I'm gonna be 42, or I guess on this video, I'm 42 years old. Now my mother did have my sister, my youngest sister when she was 42. My grandmother had my mother when she was late 40s. I wanna say 48, but I'm not positive because she had a long stretch of 10 years between her second child and then her third and fourth child. My mom's a twin. Maybe I have genetics that will allow me to have a baby when I'm older, do I want to have a baby when I'm this old? I don't know. Maybe if it's within the next year or two when I still can, sure. I'm a little bit scarred because my mom being an older mom, watching my mom at 42 years old taking care of a baby, she, she was burnt out. Now it could be because she was raising kids for years. I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay with not having them, but I'm still open to maybe having them. I guess I'll leave it at that. I assume that you're okay with financially supporting Adam, even when he's out of prison, since it might take time for him to find a job with good pay. Well, first of all, yes, I am totally okay with that. But second of all, Adam already has a job lined up with good pay, a salary in writing, in a letter, stamp signed, approved, notarized. He has a job lined up and waiting for him the minute he walks out the door. So I am super grateful for that. It is literally his dream job with his one of his best friends in the whole entire world. Shout out to John Ponder, amazing man. I could cry at the amount of love and support that we've gotten from John throughout the years. Before I continue, now just to really tighten up and emphasize my outer quarter, quarter, my outer, my outer corner, I'm using this right here from the Tati palette. I assume that you've been hurt in past relationships. Oh, 100%. I told the story about how my ex from college who was in the Marines was probably my longest and most, not longest, no, my ex before Adam. Oh, I need to tell you guys that story. But we were on and off for 10 years. So this other one was not, he was, we were together probably two years but that was probably my most serious relationship before Adam and he hurt me and he messed me up bad. And that's why I, oh, so bad. That's why I put up with so much crap from the guy after him because he was kind of rebound and he lasted on and off, like I said, for 10 years. He still to this day calls me. I don't answer the phone anymore, but trying to get me to hook up with him. A lot of times we get insecure because we want somebody so bad and we try to fit a square peg into a round hole and they're just not accepting of it. And then eventually you get over that person and the tables turn and everything flips and you are so vindicated. I promise you guys, it will all come full circle. And that's where I'll leave that because I'll tell that story another time. Ooh, another good one. My assumption is what initially intrigued you about a prison relationship is not what kept you in it for the long haul. Girl, on the money. Yes, 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 and more yes. You nailed that one, nailed it. There was something about it that was intriguing and exciting and he's a bad boy and it's different and I'm gonna save him. and. Adam's very attractive and oh, side note, I should not have even said that because one of my biggest pet peeves in the whole entire world and one of the biggest ways that you can insult me is to tell me that I'm with Adam only because he's good looking. And I will make its own dedicated video, but really quick, let me touch on that. First of all, Adam is gorgeous, absolutely drop dead gorgeous. However, what you're saying when you tell me that is number one, I'm only with him because I'm that shallow. Number two, 
that I can't get a guy out here that is equally as attractive. Number three, I might not be a supermodel, but I'm not ugly. You're insulting me. You're giving me the most backhanded, no, it's not even a compliment. It's not even a backhanded compliment. You are literally insulting me to my face. You make me want to vomit. We'll talk about this in another video. Because basically what you're telling me is that I'm ugly, or at least that's how I'm reading that. So this is what we're working with at the moment. I'm just going to detail this outer corner a little better and blend it a little better. So the trick to this look is just kind of blending everything together. Christina's assumption is you have many guys in your DMs. Oh, you're so cute. I've had a few here and there. Refer to the last one I was talking about, my ex that DMs me all the time. Well, he stopped now since he got married, but he DMed me like the week before his wedding. Loser. I've had a few, but not too, too many. You assume I'm too pretty. Lotus, you're so, so sweet. I assume your family has Catholic heritage besides for when you were in the cult. Assumed 100% correctly, right? Correctly, right? Makes sense. I assume the cult was some type of branch off of the Catholic church. Kind of. They were... A, they were affiliated with the Catholic Church, sort of, until they got excommunicated, is that the word, from the bishop way back. I assume you don't feel comfortable talking about Adam or SPWF with your dad, and there's a whole side of you he and a lot of your family doesn't see. Yes, so if you watch my video, and I'll put it up in the cards right there, that says something about what my family really thinks about me being in a relationship, I touch on how my dad feels about this and a promise I made to my mom before she died about broaching this with my dad and with my extended family. And instead of making this video longer than it already is, I already hit max on video number one. And so, which is a half an hour. So just look for that. I assume your dad doesn't approve of Adam. It's not that he doesn't approve of Adam, let's say. My dad is a lot less opinionated and harsh and strict as my mother was. He knows it's my decision and he's not gonna stop me, but we also don't speak about it. Refer to that video. I assume you're self-conscious about showing too much cleavage just from a few comments you've made in videos. Yes, only because I went through a phase in my younger years where I thought it was the hottest thing in the world to hang the girls out. And to be honest with you, there's a certain age when that is just so beyond inappropriate. Now, I can, believe me, get down with some revealing outfits, but I just think it's inappropriate at my age. I think it's inappropriate to show too, too much and leave nothing to the imagination. And to be quite honest, I think it's sexier to cover up in a lot of outfits. Like some of the sexiest outfits you've ever seen start with a turtleneck. But do you? If you want to hang out your cleavage, that's for you. That's not for me anymore, especially at my age. I assume it bothers you when people tell you Adam will never get out. Oh, girl. That is how you get to my core. Ugh. Yes, it does. I assume you're terrified he'll never get out and just won't entertain the idea because it's so scary. Nailed it. Nailed it. In fact, I had a girlfriend who told me, I don't believe this is true for one second. She said, I know Adam's getting out eventually, but we don't know when that is. So she said, why don't you just live your life like he's not coming home this way? It's not so painful. If something negative or disappointing happens. And I tried for about a day and I couldn't do it anymore. I got too depressed. So that's just how I am. And that's my hope. And maybe that's my denial. I don't know, but that's how it is. So you nailed that one. I assume you aren't religious at this point because of the cult. You're right. I'm very spiritual. I'm not religious at all. I assume you've never been overweight before. Ooh, I got you on that one. I have been overweight. When I was really little, I was very, very skinny to the point where my mother used to cry to the doctor because she was afraid that I was malnourished and underweight. They would always say I was fine. But as I entered puberty, probably like eight, nine years old, I started packing on pounds. And then through high school, I'm 5'3". I was 5'3 in sixth grade. I was the tallest girl in the class. And then everyone grew and I stopped growing because I hit puberty young. Really quick, I'm going to take this, a combo of these two shades on my finger, and I'm going to put them on my inner lid. I'm going to start with this darker one on the outer corner, kind of by the V, and then we're going to go towards the inside with this glitter. All through high school, I was wearing a size 14-ish, and I'm bottom heavy. In college, I had blew up. I gained 30 pounds freshman year because I lived with a roommate. She was just naturally a very skinny girl and eated whatever she eated. Eated? Are you kidding me? Whoa. She used to eat whatever she wanted, 
We would go to McDonald's every night. We would go to Wendy's. I never ate fast food before college and I never ate fast food after college, thank God. But back then we used to eat it all the time. I was so unhealthy and it took me probably until my junior year of college to start taking that weight off because I found aerobics classes back then. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just do my inner corner, my highlight. I don't think I put much on my lips that day. And then I think we're pretty done. I'm gonna use my contour palette. This is just the Wet n Wild one. You can get it for $3 at Walmart. You can get it at the dollar store. I hit pan on both of these in like two months. I use it for everything. So I can pile on pounds. I'm very, very skinny upper body and I carry all of my weight, hips, butt, thighs, knees, and calves. And my ankles are actually really thick genetically. So when I gain weight, you guys don't see it because I'm always sitting in my videos, but I'm actually kind of heavy for myself right now. You could see my face is a little thicker than usual, but you don't see it too much. And sometimes you'll see it in here. Majority of the time you don't see it because I just look really skinny because I have a very skinny upper body and I am blessed naturally with big boobs. I assume you have a strict daily routine, sort of. I'm like the most unorganized, organized person. I'm very strict with routine in certain things and I'm very fly by the seat of my pants with other things. And that's something that I always tell Adam, that's why we're gonna get along so much better in the future than if I was very strict and organized and OCD with things because he's like that. He thought in May he was getting out. He thought he was getting out on a very certain day of May, literally, because he read an article, did math, whatever it was, obviously didn't happen because here we are July and he's not out yet. But he had me so stressed out. He's like, I need you to get a map. I was like, a map? who uses maps anymore? It's called a GPS. I need you to map out the trip to Vegas. I need you to do this. Are you packing the car? Did you pack your clothes? Excuse me? He had me so stressed out. And so finally I told him, I was like, listen, that's not how I live my life. I fly by the seat of my pants, which obviously is not very good. But in this instance, it's very good because any other person who has to control everything in their life would be nuts. You would drive them nuts. Me, I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't care what route we take to Las Vegas. As long as we get there, I have a GPS. I can reroute it. No big deal. So yes, I'm very regimented with certain things because I have to be like the gym, like work, like my YouTube videos. Ugh, overly routine and regimented with that. But other things I'm like, the wind blew that way. Let's go that way. The wind blew that way. Let's go that way. That's me. Thank God because of him. I assume you could shout from the rooftops and tell everyone how much you love Adam and support him, but are scared of being judged. Absolutely. 100%. No clarification needed on those. That is just God's honest truth. Oh, I never answered the one. I assume that you have a hard time letting others down because you have a big heart. Yes, I am a people pleaser. I need to actually learn the art of saying no better because I am not good at it to my own detriment. I'm just going in with this to add a little shimmer to my inner corner, not too, too much because we already have so much glitter, but there's just not enough oomph there for a birthday look, I mean, girl. So what I'm gonna do on my lower lash line is kind of use the colors on top and just stay really close, but give it like a little smudgy look. Not the glittery one, but I'm gonna use this color in the Tati palette. Ooh, this is another good one. I assume sometimes you wish you were in a normal, everyday relationship, not with an inmate. Love your content. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes I do. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with admitting that. I think everybody that's in a relationship with an inmate or maybe a long distance relationship like military wives or just long distance, people that met online wish that they were in a relationship with somebody that they could sleep next to every night, that they could hug every night, that they could cook for. I just said to Adam the other day, he said that he had just woken up from a nap because he sounded so tired on the phone and he said that he slept through dinner. And I was like, oh my God, are you starving? Poor Adam, he's so lean. I'm like, I can't wait to fatten you up a little bit. And he said, no, I ate mackerel in my cell. And I was like, ugh, canned mackerel. I cannot wait for you to come home because you will never eat mackerel again unless it is in a roll with seaweed and rice wrapped around it. And he laughed. Usually he's like, no, I like it. But even he agreed with me then. So how did I get on that tangent? This is me, I always get on tangents. I assume you and Adam have spicy phone calls sometimes. No, we don't ever. The spiciest we ever got was talking about the spicy letter I sent him for Valentine's Day in my intimacy video. I'll pop the link to, why do we say pop? Why do we say pop all the time? What am I popping, a champagne bottle? I'll put the link to it right up there in the cards, but we've never, ever, ever had sexy phone time. I assume that you're completely dedicated and in love with Adam, but that you've contemplated breaking up with him in the past, thinking it would be an easier life for both of you. Love you and can't wait for the video. 
I love you too, girl. 100% you're right. I've actually sent him a Dear John letter. Okay, before I continue, I want to say more about that. I can't decide if I want to put on lashes or not. I mean, it's my birthday. I should put on lashes. Every birthday deserves lashes, but it's 6 o'clock p.m. on a Tuesday. I'm in quarantine. What am I wasting lashes for? Guys, what do I do? Help a sister out. I know you guys are saying lashes. I could hear you. I could hear you saying lashes. Fine, I'll do it. You don't have to put on lashes with this look. In the original video that I posted that you guys loved, I had no lashes on. So if you're not a lashes type of a girl, you don't need it. Mascara is perfectly fine. I have sent Adam a Dear John letter before. I'll save that. I think I'll tell that story in a video. And I hope he's with me to tell that story because I'd love for him to talk about being on the receiving end of that email. I had just had enough. I was just... Like you said, I just wanted to be in a normal relationship. I loved him more than anything else in the whole entire world. I was just depressed, out of my mind depressed. I just wanted to be normal. I just didn't want to be involved in prison life anymore. It's hard. That's why I always try to warn you guys or the TikTok challenge stuff, people you guys don't understand what you're getting yourself into. And it's all fun and games in the beginning when this is so exciting and you're getting to learn somebody new and it's a honeymoon. And then all of a sudden you're left about a year in. This is Adam. Hey. Hey. I'm literally in the middle of filming a video. Do you want to say anything? Uh. It's going to be my birthday video. Oh, really? Yeah. Your birthday video? Yeah. Well, then I guess I should say happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, happy birthday uh, for the entire month of July. And if anyone deserves to have an entire birthday month, it is definitely you. It's like July and half of August, let's be real. Okay, that works. You want to be here for this one? Yeah. I am definitely, I'm planning on being here. That was perfect timing. I just spoke to Adam while I finished my highlighter and my lashes. I forgot to bring mascara down for my lower lashes, my lower lash line. Oh my God, can there be another distraction during this 17 and a half hour video? Do you hear the phone in the background? Now the second phone's gonna ring in there. Like really, what is happening? But that's okay. So here are my eyes. If you guys try it, tag me. That's better. I was a little too up, and cl up close and personal before. I assume that you and Adam never fight. We don't fight very often at all. We've had maybe one really bad fight where he hung up on me on the phone because he was trying to force me to move to Vegas. I know, crazy story. He thought it was in my best interest, but it wasn't. I just had to remind him, look, I don't know what it's like to live in your world. I never tell you what to do because I don't have experience living in your world in that society. At the same time, you have not lived in my world for over 20 years. You don't have experience in this world. I know what's best for me out here, just like you know what's best for you in there. So you're gonna have to trust my judgment on this one. That's what it boiled down to. But that was the one and only time that we got into a fight that was bad enough that he hung up on me. And then there have been a few times where we just don't see eye to eye on things, but we don't. We typically don't fight at all. You're right. There are times that I get snippy and bitchy with him, for sure. I assume that many people, women and men, try to convince you that you're wasting your time and you deserve better and that hearing this sometimes hurts you. Absolutely, 100%, always. I assume your favorite color is yellow. Nope, it's purple. Yellow is beautiful though. Those were the Instagram and the YouTube assumptions. You guys gave me some juicy ones. On Facebook, you guys were so sweet and supportive, so I'll just go through some of them. I don't wanna sound like I'm bragging, so I won't go through all of them where it's like I couldn't have gotten through this without you and that you're beautiful, but I asked for assumptions about me and also Life or Wives, and that's what we got a lot of. I think Life or Wives are either amazing or insane or both. I don't think I could ever do it. I think you have to be a little bit of both, honestly, to be able to do it. You have to be incredibly strong to go through the challenges that come along with this and people telling you you're crazy all the time, and you have to be a little bit crazy to stand by somebody who you know you can never be with for the rest of your life. I mean, I live in denial. I'm not going to lie about that. So yeah, 100%, your assumption is right there, at least from my opinion. I know you have a special type of love and loyalty I know would be hard with this lifestyle. I know I couldn't do it even as much as I love my husband. Yeah, it is heartbreaking, and it's just something that you have to buckle up and be ready to do the ride. It is what it is, and you can also take off your seatbelt, ask to be let out of the car whenever you're done with the ride. It's just something that I think life or wives have to really embrace is it's hard. It could be forever and it could be tomorrow I wake up and I'm over it. I have to be okay with that. I have to be okay with my feelings. I have a whole video about 
what it's really like being with a lifer and my feelings about it. And I got really vulnerable and open and raw with you guys. And I'll post that up there in the cards. Not pop it up there, I'll post it up there. You, you changed my perspective on holding it down while he's in. You're well articulated, poised for the most part. Ha ha ha, <laughs> that's incredible. Obviously beautiful, determined, relentless, resourceful, and undeniably have a huge heart. On the life or wife, that's where you're crazy. Oh my gosh, I love you, Kim. But you know what? I've only been doing this for over a year and I see how I'm changing one life. You've not only changed Adams, but everyone that you come in contact with. This is your calling, your passion. Most never find that within themselves. True warrior. Oh my God, girl, you touched my heart. Oh, life or wives, you must cheat all the time on your man. How could you never dot, 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 dot again? Oh girl, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that assumption, I would be a very rich woman. I would take us all on vacation to a tropical island and fruity little cocktails in coconuts on me. That's how much I would make. I assume that it takes a ton financially to keep things afloat. That's true. When I think of you, I have no assumptions. I see beauty, grace, and youth. Yes, youth. Compared to me, you're so young. Oh, now, when you said life or wives, my crazy brain created this image of the stereotypical affiliated wife with big hair, tons of makeup, filing her nails. My brain is papool, which means crazy in Hawaiian. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Papulai, I don't know. It never stops. I don't know why I got that image. As a lifer woman, myself, I'm so not the stereotype and I know better than to ever buy into stereotypes. I do know that I use humor to get through a lot of things in life. Maybe that's why that image popped into my head. I don't know. That's cute. So many people thought I was taller than I am. Okay, this one is probably one of my favorites too. Yeah, I echo all of the sentiments here. I was quietly surprised, cause that's my MO, ha ha ha, at the dignity, grace, truth, loyalty, poise, honor, restraint, emotional maturity, eloquence, and humor on this page among its members. And you are the perfect example of all of that. You lead by example, Roseanne. I need to rewatch the Why Am I Paul Drow video. I'll post it up there. Also, I get Toto in my head every time I say your name, but add an A in my head. That's hysterical. I tried many Prison Wives pages on for size when I first joined the community, but this one was my Cinderella. Ella, Ella, Ella. Oh, got all the oldies today. That's not an oldie, I know it. Maybe I'm just old with you, I don't know. But it was my Cinderella shoe because of the reasons above. Honestly, when I talk to my loved one about you, your videos, your expressions, hi loves. I think he's worried I'm gonna run off with you. Maybe if I lived closer. I love you. When describing you to somebody new, I say, think Adriana, but hilarious. Oh girl, this is the best birthday present ever. I love this comment. But honestly, just thank you for continuing to show up and do this stuff. I'm sure there must be days when you're not feeling tip top, but you still do a video. So here's my question for you. Where do you get your support from? I realize it's not an assumption. You blew my assumptions about you clean out of the water early on when I was watching your videos and marveling at what a Jersey girl you are with your hair, nails, lips, clothing, earrings, heels, accent, etc. And then thinking, how does anyone keep that up? Then bam, the next video, you're in your workout gear, all sweaty, no makeup, hair in a scrunchie, and that's when I fell in love with you. Real talk. Because you are just you and not afraid to be seen physically or emotionally. Love ya. Keep on trucking. Oh my God, I love that. Love that. Love that. There are like tons more. I just... This video is so, so long, so I'll get to the rest of them in another video. But I get my strength from you guys, to be honest. I get my support from you guys, to be honest. I have a group of very close-knit SPWF prison wife besties that I basically have on speed dial, talk about showing our age, that I do video chats with, I have phone calls with. I have my amazing friends. And honestly, I feel supported when I can make the videos, when I can get up on my not tip top days and turn on the camera and show you the real vulnerable me. Because if you get to see the polished side of me, I have to show you the sweaty workout, hair in a scrunchie, no makeup, crying side of me, or you can't appreciate that because there is nothing realistic in this life about being polished and put together all the time. We're not like that. 
That's us on visit days. That's us on our resumes. That's not us on the days that we don't know if we can get out of bed. We don't know if we could do this one day more. We don't know if we're gonna be able to go into work today because we just got the worst news of our lives and we have to slap on a fucking smile and make believe that we're perfectly fine. Otherwise, people are going to point fingers, whisper behind our backs, say terrible things to our faces and question our sanity. And that's what I've had to go through for so many years. And that's why being able to vent to you on camera during those times is my support. I love you guys. Thank you so much for putting up with this long ass video with all of me, the good, the not so good, the crazy, the speed talking, the accent that's halfway not understandable sometimes, the hands, the gesticulations, and just another year of allowing me to be me and support you. You are the best thing that ever happened to me and my life wouldn't be complete without each and every one of you. So if you're not already subscribed, that would be the best birthday present you could ever give me as well as a thumbs up. Ring the notification bell, all of the things. Leave me some love in the comments below because you know, it's my birthday. I love each and every one of you with my whole heart. If you wanna see other birthday videos I made in the past, click that video right there or that video up there. Oh, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.